electrophilic addition is the name of the mechanism that we're going to study with the alkenes topic, and uh, we've got a definition for that. An electrophilic addition is an addition reaction in which the first step is the attack by an electrophile on a region of high electron density, which begs the question, what do those words mean? Well, an addition reaction is when we have a reactant added to an unsaturated molecule to make a saturated molecule. So essentially we're removing a double bond there um, and replacing it with just a single bond uh, between the carbon atoms. Um, electrophile is a an atom or a group of atoms that are attracted to an electron-rich centre where they accept a pair of electrons. And electron density um, is an area where the probability of there being an electron is high. So we're going to look at this in the context of alkenes. Here's a molecule of ethene, or at least here's a displayed formula of ethene. Um, we know, of course, that it's not quite an accurate representation because what we have really is we have a sigma bond and a pi bond where our double bond is, and I'm going to start here. Um, we are looking for the probability of an electron being present being high because without that we can't have an area of high electron density. And high electron density in an alkene happens in the double bond. We have the sigma bond in the middle and we have the pi bond above and below the plane of the molecule. And the probability of us finding an electron in the region in between the carbon atoms here and here is actually relatively high. So we have an area of high electron density. We're going to react this molecule with HBr. HBr behaves as an electrophile because it is attracted to this electron-rich high electron density area um, and we're going to take a pair of electrons from here and we're going to give it back to here. So why is that? Well you can see I've put a little dipole on here so the end of the molecule with the hydrogen is ever so slightly more positive than it would uh, the neutral um, and the end with the Br, um, the bromine atom, is um, ever so slightly more negative. And the reason for that is that bromine uh, uh, is more electronegative than hydrogen. And so it pulls the electrons in the double bond towards itself. And so our electrons in our double bond are more towards the bromine, uh, leaving the hydrogen slightly more slightly more pos uh, positive than it would usually be um, in an, for example, H2, um, and bromine is slightly more negative than it would be in, for example, Br2. So, our pi bond in our alkene is going, to, is going to be where the electrons come from in this bond, and we're going to draw a curly arrow to show the movement of the electrons. Now, it's not the movement of this. This whole molecule is not moving this way and this one is stationary. That's not what's happening here. What's happening is this pi bond is breaking and the electrons in the pi bond are going to be attracted to the hydrogen atom. Um, and because there are two electrons, we're going to have a double-headed arrow. And we're doing it as a curly arrow, as a convention of the movement of electrons. So if you see a diagram with a curly arrow like that, it's uh, movement of electrons. If you see a straight arrow, then that's uh, the, the reaction arrow, you know, the reactants turning into products. So our curly arrow is showing that the electrons in the double bond here are moving onto the hydrogen atom. And as that happens, we're going to end up with a situation where there are too many electrons here. So the hydrogen atom is going to get rid of some of those electrons, and the only option it has is to break this bond. So the electrons in the bond will go onto the bromine atom. So, key things, I've drawn this curly arrow here from this double bond, because it's coming from the pi bond, and it's going to either the atom, the H itself, or the delta plus, because that's that's the attraction, but I always do it to the atom itself because it makes it clearer. We're going to break this bond here um, and we're going to join it to this hydrogen atom. Similarly here, the arrow is coming from the bond, no gap there, okay, it's from, from the bond itself onto the atom um, of bromine. So the electrons are coming from the bond and they're ending up on the atom. So let's look at what that forms. We have GCC dot and cross diagram here of um, ethene. 
I've done the pi electrons in pink. Now it could be any electrons in the pi bond um, are going to both both of them um, are going to be uh, going towards this hydrogen. Okay, and that's in our definition because our electrophile is going to accept a pair of electrons. This is the pair of electrons it's going to accept. Okay, um, and so they are going to come towards this HBr molecule which looks a bit like this. Again, I've got the electrons here in blue. Um, and these electrons here are going to go onto the bromine and we're going to break the bond with, with the hydrogen. So the hydrogen is going to come off here at the same time as these electrons here are going to join it onto this carbon atom. So we're going to see these come over here. The hydrogen atom is joined to the carbon and the bromine is left with the electrons on its own. So that's not the end of the mechanism because what we now have is we have an area here where we should, if we were thinking about our um, uh, our electron shell of carbon, have um, some more electrons. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we should have seven, eight if we're going to make a full outer shell, if we're going to make this uh, bond in the way uh, that we would expect it to. This is fine, but because these two electrons were shared between these two carbon atoms, we've kind of, eff effectively, we've lost two carbon atom electrons and they've they've been taken away and nothing's replaced them yet so one of those belonged to this carbon atom anyway the other one already belongs to this carbon atom and so it's one electron down and we are one electron short so we become positive and we draw that a bit like this so i've kept with the pink here um, to show that those are, that's where the um, electrons in the pi bond, bond went. And I'm going to draw a plus on this carbon to show that that carbon is one electron down. Over here with the bromine, we've got the uh, negative charge here because, of course, we've got a full outer shell here. We've got one extra electron than uh, bromine would um, have as an atom. We've got a bromine ion or a bromide ion. So uh, we actually have uh, a negative charge there. And so what's going to happen now is we've got a negative and a positive. Any of the electrons on this bromine um, are going can can do this. So it's not it's not ju it's not necessarily the same pair as came out of this little bond. It's a di it, but it has to be a pair of electrons. They are going to fill the uh, shell of this carbon so that we are satisfying our eight inner outer shell for carbon uh, rule that we had. Uh, before. So, bromine, pair of electrons there. The electrons are coming from that pair of electrons and they're going curly arrow to show movement of electrons to this positive charge or to the carbon atom. And it doesn't matter as long as it goes to this kind of area, not to the bonds, to definitely the plus or the carbon atom. Okay? Um, and that's going to now form a new bond in between the bromine and the carbon. And so we end up with our product here. No double bond in that anymore. That's now uh, saturated. It was unsaturated. So this counts as an addition reaction because we've added a reactant to an unsaturated molecule to make a saturated molecule. And we've done that by having the first step in this mechanism attack by this electrophile onto the alkene where we had a high electron density in the double bond um, to complete our addition reaction. And that's the mechanism for electrophilic addition. But we don't have to stop there because it doesn't have to be an HBr molecule. Um, it can in fact just be normal uh, boring old bromine. I say boring, it's horrendously co corrosive and toxic, but hey, um, because bromine, when it gets close to an alkene, behaves slightly oddly. Um, if we have it in the right orientation, so that the bond here, the sigma bond, is perpendicular to this CC carbon double bond, the pi bond in particular, the electrons in this bond will be repelled by the pi bond. And so they'll shift towards one of the bromines further away. And so we can create an electrophile 
by polarizing our bromine molecule with the pi bond. And the mechanism is exactly the same. We have um, a delta, we, we draw it perpendicular to the, to the bond again, okay, we have our pink arrow as we had before. I mean, it doesn't have to be pink, but... We have this arrow coming this here, uh, over here. Um, we I've drawn the electrons in in red. We don't need to draw the electrons in, but it's the same mechanism as, as before. So I'll take from the bond to the bromine atom there. This time we'll end up with... Well, we'll actually end up with almost the same intermediate here. And so our intermediate is slightly different because this time the first atom ad added on was a bromine, we end up with that on there instead. And then the bromide ion that we formed in, this, in that step will end up adding on to the same position as it did before. And then our product will have the bromine added over the double bond, the Br2 will have added over the double bond. It's still an addition reaction because we're starting unsaturated, we're finishing saturated, and we've used an electrophile to get there. Um, it's an addition reaction still involving the electrophile being attracted to the high electron density of this electron-rich uh, center here. Um, and so this is still the same mechanism, it's just we get a slightly different product.